All right, Drea, thanks for jumping on the podcast today. And this is our uh, having some first podcast scenarios is is a, a theme with us sometimes. And today it is first video. Um, messing around with Zoom with the death of the old P4 uh, being gone. So um, the YouTube channel can add some actual video. So that'll be it. There a we thing. go. Uh, but appreciate having you on. It's been a little bit since we chat have chatted uh so it's great having you it's always great to be on here um always great to to hear your voice and chat and we'll see where the conversation goes today yeah so we need to catch people up where you're at right now uh long time listeners know who you are uh but you have had many life changes uh just man the last 10 years i'm sure has been just a, a whirlwind of things but um in the last two years or year uh, you've you've changed uh, to be in a different position. You're sitting in a, a new location uh, geographically, uh, and uh, it sounds like you're loving life right now. What do you have going on? Yeah, you know, Clint, it's crazy because before we hopped on here, we were talking about goals, and I feel like everything in the last 10 years of my life have, have led me to the point of where I am now, like working towards all these different uh small goals, big goals. And, um, it's, it's really cool to sort of see it all come to fruition. So I am just outside of Alder, Montana, super small town in the Southwest region and, uh, been out here since October. So when I came out in October to guide for Upper Canyon Outfitters, I had no idea like where my life was going. Cause I was just in a, not in a good spot and just fell in love with Montana and, everything just works itself out. The universe tends to provide when you um, focus on, like I said, your goals and the things that really like ground you and uh, like fuel that fire within you. So over the winter, I actually lived on site at Upper Canyon, super remote. Like I said earlier, the closest town is a half hour and that doesn't even have a a gas station there. You've got to go to the next town down. So 45 minutes. Um, but I was able to finally complete my book during the winter, which was just so liberating and it felt so good. And now it's in the, um, the editing process. So I sent it off and I should have the proof this next week for it to be proof. I will proofread it. And then once that's, um, completed, it'll be sent off to publishing. So like it's, it's happening. (laughs) I've been talking about this book for a long time and working on it for a long time. And it feels really good to finally, just it's happening and it, it'll be in people's hands within the next couple months oh really which is, wow which is great yeah yeah the the um pre-sale process is that still you have that open or what what, what status mm-hmm. yeah pre-sale is open and um the whole thing with the pre-sale is so like you purchase a book for me well that money's just going directly into the, the cost of what it costs to get a book edited and published which isn't cheap. And so like everyone who's bought their, um, their book now on pre-sale for like the discounted price, it's going right into, um, like I said, the funds to get that edited and published. And so that's going to be open until the book is complete. Those books will all be signed. I will be sending those out. I'll be writing little notes and, uh, you know, certain people who, who I know, um, sending off some little gifts with those. But once the book is published, the menu or the uh, the publisher that I'm using will be doing a print to order process. So in like six months, if someone were to buy my book, Book Logic, the company that I'm using, they will print it and they'll send it off from okay. their company. Yeah, um, and and we can plug this in, but plug it now too. While we got most listeners with us, go ahead and and tell us where to look at look for that. Yeah, so you can go to my website. It's just www.whatsyourwild.com. It will bring you right to the page. Um, And like I said, you won't have it right away. It will probably be another month or two before the book is in your hands, but it will be at a discounted price since it is the pre-sale price. Um, And all of those funds are going to fund the process of all of this. Right. Um, And then then add add a little uh, pre-log, a short little pre-log, or tell us a little bit uh your elevator speech or what it's about absolutely so um it is an autobiography so an inspirational memoir of my life of 32 years on this planet 
And um, a lot of people kind of laugh because they're like, huh, what do you know in 32 years? Well, it's like, well, we all have our story. And I feel like mine is is worthy of sharing, um, just experiencing some some uh, like sexual trauma at a young age, but healing from that in wild places. So like the main thing about this book is how important wild places are. Uh, it's a resource we all have. It's in our back door. It's free. Like our public lands are everywhere. We have parks. We have an unlimited space to be able to go out and just uh, to learn and to grow. And, you know, I spent a lot of years behind the house growing up, hiding in the ferns. I felt so safe in the rainforest, hiding in these ferns that were five feet tall and the big evergreens down at the the creek or the pond. And I would go out there for hours and I would just lay and I would observe and I would be present and my heart rate would like finally chill out and I was no longer in fight or flight mode. But anytime I was at home, I was uh, fight or flight mode, constantly watching my back. Um, but I didn't realize that when I was a child, that wild places was like my my place of grounding and my place to like keep me sane um, as a child. And then it wasn't until my early adult years that I um, started healing because all the suppressed memories came back. So I didn't tell anyone for 15 years. That was a secret I kept inside me and that did a lot of damage to my self-worth. I had no confidence. Um, when I had met you, Clint, that was kind of during my time of really starting to just love exploring wild places by myself because it gave me this newfound confidence and I was learning so much and I was able to really process a lifetime of trauma that I had. Um, so yeah, my book is essentially that in a nutshell and like how important it is to educate our children and to speak our story and have more awareness on these issues that are going on and to take your kids outside, let your kids get outside, get them away from the TV or their phones or the iPads or whatever it is, because it's going to suck them right in. Um, let them go play in the dirt, you know, build a garden with your kids. Like I'm so grateful to be raised off the land. Like I, it's like so bittersweet. I wish I could just have it all back. I wish I could have it back, you know, being out there in the garden with my parents, gardening, fishing on the river, hunting with my dad, just being outside all the time. Um, and so in a nutshell, that is what, what's her wild and untold story yeah. is about. Um, I know it's going to hopefully bring some change. I know it's going to hopefully inspire other people. I think all of our stories are worthy of telling. That's um, exactly what I was going to add. Um, your story has, has some, some heartstring pullers in it. Uh, some, some, uh, tears and some, some tough things to swallow. Uh, but mm -hmm. I was thinking that exact same thing. Everybody's story has, has a, something that you can learn from. And, uh, a buddy and I were just talking about that last night that we have quite different lives, but, uh, we both enjoy living through each other in these different style of life. I have kids ease out doing some amazing adventures that I can't do. And, uh, we both have some cool things going on that, that has a, has a lot of lessons to learn from that. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely, no matter how boring or exciting that, that life story is, I think there's, there's a lot we can learn from each other. And so, uh, I appreciate you, you going and a lot of people will, uh, going out on a limb and, and sharing that story because it won't come without a little, a little, uh, difficult, some difficulty, uh, I'm sure. Vulnerability, vulnerability is a, is a beautiful thing it's, 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 uh, it's pretty damn hard, but it's, it's beautiful. Um, when, when you can do it. So, yeah. and none of that has come without setting some goals and setting some, yes. some, uh, a process for your life. And in this episode, we kind of, were discussing what we wanted to discuss. We like, uh, just getting on the phone and chatting, but we want this to be something somebody wants to listen to and can, can, uh, pull things from. And so I kind of thought, uh, from what you're saying and we, we what we talked about before getting on uh, 
but also an experience I had just recently with my old coach and coaches throughout people's lives, whether it is an athletic coach or a mentor or somewhere down the line, uh, those people that are that are a part of our lives have have brought us uh, something to look forward in life to, uh, and and they help it I guess guide through. Uh, whatever we're at in in that point in life, and and one gentleman that uh, did that for me was my wrestling coach. I started wrestling in seventh grade. We were in the middle school. Eighth grade then transferred or got to go up to the the high school and wrestle with the with the big kids. And that's when this skinny little twerp, 103 pounds, uh, got to go into the wrestling room and got to to meet my coach, coach Holman, um, and wrestled for him for four years, five years in high school, middle school, high school. And then, uh, just out of some really cool things, ended up being able to, uh, wrestle in his program at the university of Sioux Falls. And it just, uh, no one else has been able to be coached by him for nine, nine full years. So I was able to, to learn a lot from this man and I was able to go to his house the other day and just catch up with him just had a had a drink sat on his patio and just looked at uh the prairie and it was eastern South Dakota and somehow he found a piece of land that was looking over some hills and some glacier hills on this flat agricultural ground uh and we sat there and just had a conversation caught up about what's going on in each other's lives and through that conversation, he had brought up some of those things that uh, we did and his purpose, why he was doing some things uh, in, in working with us. And he he gave some reflection on how I was as a, a wrestler and a human. And because I had always talked like I was not meant to be a college wrestler. I'm six. I was six, seven at the time of six, six now. Darn herniated disc. Uh, but uh I'm not, everyone looks at me, even when I coached, the coaches would come up to me. It's like, you're at the wrong state tournament, buddy. Um, (laughs) And I'm not meant to be a a wrestler, let alone a college wrestler. And he gave me that opportunity. um, And he really just the other day uplifted me a lot with some really, really great things and telling me that you were, you were a good wrestler. You had a lot of things in you that that made you a leader and that your character and it it just made me feel good. And then he kind of got into uh, one of the the goal setting things that we used to do. And he talked about what he's doing in his career and the goal setting uh, was something you write down. Um, and, and we've all kind of gotten to, well, I want to go shoot an elk. I kind of want to, I'd like to go to Alaska someday. I kind of want to do this. I want to do that. And sure when we're in college we write these goals down or we don't write these down that we want to become a vet someday or and and they're big lofty goals but once we get into this adulthood and in our 20s and 30s we start getting into this rhythm of things and your one two three year goals that are just right out there are i just want to live life (laughs) i want to Mm -hmm. maybe be healthy i just don't want to die or Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's uh just trying to survive yeah yeah yeah. and and then i'm assuming at some point we're just going to turn around we're 60 years old so i took that to heart and i wrote down a big long list of goals (laughs) to like shoot i remember coach you're still coaching me and saying Mm -hmm. i need to be doing my my goals um and one thing that i told him is i miss wrestling i'm not a part of it right now in my life life it's not uh, something I'm actively doing. And I, I have been, I've been coaching ever since I was in, in college and now I'm not, but what I've realized is I needed that at that point, I needed my coach. I needed wrestling and what that has done has helped me do what I do now. Hunting is right up here. Wrestling is down here. And wrestling happens in November, December, January, February. I just can't. (laughs) Not a good time of the year. I know. I know. (laughs) Um, I missed a tournament every year because I had to go, I had to go hunting. So, um, but this is what I needed then. That's what I needed then to have, to help me do what I'm doing now. And I, the first person I called after my mountain goat hunt in Colorado was him, or I sent him a text and it's like, thank you. 
thank you so much for teaching me mental toughness. Thank you for um, everything that you taught me because I could not have done that without having those skills. It's like I knew in the in my head that you suck this up and you get it done. And yeah. there was that that was not coming from being a lazy kid. Uh, someone instilled that in me. So goals are really kind of what uh, what kind of got me there. And now it's time as a 36 year old and a 32 year old. Um, it's time to be looking at at what now. And, and everyone else that's listening is everywhere in between and beyond. So um, time to be thinking about our goals. Yeah, when I remember being 18 years old and trying to find work and my sisters, they were all in like the medical field. Uh, my sister worked at like a, a dentist place. She was in a, like a, a, a receptionist. My other sister was going to school. She was going to be a CNA. And I just wanted to run around with a camera. I was, you know, I just came off of four years of photography in high school and I, I loved it. I've had a camera in my hand since I was a girl. And I was like, I want to have a, a photo studio someday. I want to have my own studio. And my dad told me, he's like, you know, someday this world isn't going to need photographers, but they are going to need nurses and doctors. So maybe you should go and get like your CNA license. I was like, no, I am not doing that because there, I have no desire to do those things. What I know right now in this moment is I love having a camera in my hand, but you know, at 18 years old, I didn't know exactly what it was I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that it brought me just like, I was good at it. And it, it brought me like this sense of like purpose and, and drive. And I was thinking about that today while I was driving out for this, um, to come up to this house for internet for this zoom call was the things that I found myself doing so much growing up, the things that brought me, um, so much like purpose and drive and that I just loved doing and I couldn't seem to like not do are the same exact things that I'm doing now. And it's turned into a career. Like it's, it's worked itself out. Like I didn't know then when I was a kid that I, uh, you know, I didn't have those goals laid out, but I remember watching Primo's hunting videos with my dad and being like, oh, I want to be like one of them one day. I want to run around with a camera. I want to do something like that. I just think it's so cool. Like in my head, I was having those thoughts when I was, you know, seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people get so caught up in the goal itself. And it, it's a lot of work sometimes. So sometimes those goals are five years out. Maybe they're only a couple years, a couple months. But I think a lot of people lose themselves in, uh, in the process and like really having to trust the process, right? It's hard because you're not going to get there overnight. You're not going to achieve that goal right away. So learning how to sort of navigate through that process of getting there and the roadblocks that are going to come your way. Like I had one last fall and it's like, well, I guess I'm going to Montana now. And then yeah. it's like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm going to stay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. I'm here. Like this place makes me, you know, like, I have this new creative fire within me that I've been searching for for a long time, but I wouldn't have ever found it where I was because I was stuck. Yeah. You know, so sometimes it takes change, change to get there. Yeah. And, and there's a, uh, my coach said one very interesting thing. He said that, I don't know if I'd heard him say, bef say before, and he, he was saying three years is a really good number for for goals to set because when you set those five-year goals there's certain things where life happens and you have to adjust and it's just then it's not obtainable anymore um i think i i know he still thinks i mean there's things that we are going to do in five and ten years that we got to still work towards at that point but um really i think putting a lot of focus in that one to three and mm -hmm. we just may procrastinate if it's five or 10 yeah. years down the road, but how can we make those things happen? What, um, in, in the last, and we all do this a little differently. Um, mine now is, is writing these things out. Uh, it's been done a little differently in the past. Uh, what's, what's been your process over the last couple of years of, of being a writer, you are like a published writer. Um, you could now call yourself once this crazy, baby gets 
published, yeah. you're a writer. So crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you've done plenty of blogging and, and article writing and things, uh, but you got a book. So um, that's a goal. Check. Done. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and some of these other goals of uh, starting a business or being a, a business partner and, and building your business. Uh, what are some of those things, the, the process that you have done to achieve goals or set goals and to achieve them? I think it's really important who you surround yourself with um, because people are either going to build you up, they're going to support you, or they're not going to do that. And so for a good time frame in my life, when I was just kind of floating around, I was a raft guide, I was drinking and partying all the time. I had no sort of no like focus as to what I wanted to do. The people I was surrounding myself were doing the same thing. But as soon as uh, these things started to happen, you know, owning a business, writing a book, the book has been a, I have, this was my third attempt. So I wrote two other times and I lost both manuscripts and I just told myself, you're not in the right perspective yet. You're not ready to tell it. And so you're just going to try again. But I have found the people that I have surrounded with, for example, the previous outfitter I was working for in Colorado, no boy, no, they were not going to help me get to where I wanted to get, get to, but being here at upper Canyon, where it's nothing but like we, if we are going to rise, you're going to rise. Um, the uh, part business owner, Cassie, uh, she runs a nonprofit um, for military and vets working with horses. And she's doing some amazing work here. And we had an open house for her the other day. And it was like 100 people came out. And it was so cool to just see so much support. And she told somebody here, she said, if I'm going to rise, you're going to rise and we are going to do whatever we can to help you get there. And so number one, I think that's, that's huge, right? Because then, you know, you've got that support system and you know, those people are going to be checking in with you. Hey, how's your book coming along? Hey, what's new with Ridge Patrol? Like, how's your pro staff coming along? So then they're now holding you accountable to, um, check in with yourself and be like, all right, where am I at in these goals that I, that I have? Um, and I think that's big. And with the writing, writing the book, a lot of that was like, I just need to keep writing. I can't stop writing. Cause if I do, I'm never going to, I'm never going to finish this book. Cause I definitely stalled out on a, uh, on that book for a couple of years. Cause I just quit writing and then there I was, just fell out of habit. There was that moment there of transition. It seems mm -hmm. like that's where that happened where you were able yeah. to just, sit down and you had a good a chunk of time good chunk of time and just busted mm -hmm. it out yeah and then yeah. the progress turned into i mean you've written it how many times i mean you said uh, you've so written three it. it took me three times yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. the published version is my third attempt which i'm very happy about because the first version nah probably <laughs> I didn't want to tell it was coming from a very like angry resentful place <laughs> and yeah. uh and I'm happy with the place that it came from this time around but yeah mm -hmm. what about you what's what do you feel like is helps you sort of stay in check with your goals uh stubbornness <laughs> <laughs> that would be just that's the first thing that comes straight yeah. out of my <laughs> mouth is just being stubborn and mm -hmm um the the influences that i have had uh and the i don't i couldn't verbalize this to i was having a conversation with Kristen, my wife uh the other night that um i am just busy i just i thrive off of being busy i get up early i go to bed late and I'm constantly doing things. I don't sit down. And I, I think that's what keeps the weight off. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> coach, I can still jump in at 197. Yep. No problem. Let me know if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, I just can't drink a bottle of water and I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I don't sit down. I, and I keep going and I keep plugging and my to-do list is, is a million things long and I'm okay with it. Uh, I know it's a lot of random to-do list stuff but I am really okay with it. And I like it. I thrive off of that because I constantly think of, is this making me better? 
is this making me better? No. Is this making me better? No. I know this long drink right here is not making me better, but it's making me happy right now. And it's refreshing. So it's making me better. Uh, All in moderation, (laughs) healthy balance. Right, right. And and that's, Mm -hmm. that's come even with uh, alcohol. I, I, it's reserved for a Friday or Saturday night for me. And I, I keep it really to that unless it's a, um, special meeting or whatever with people, but it's not a hard line. I I don't use that to stick in front of people in any reason. That's just a choice that I made to say that that would make me better. That would help me get up earlier. Um, even because at 36, you have one of these and it makes it just a little touch harder to get up at four or five (laughs) to do things. Um, but the constantly thinking of how can I better myself? is really really what and i don't know where that comes from uh i've never been a top athlete i've never been top student i've never uh i've never really been a c student in all of my academic career um but maybe just outside influences and hearing uh good people and people doing good things and people that are are they're accomplished um it's telling their story uh mm-hmm. one of those things you 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 hear um it, Cameron Haynes book is like a kick in the pants that book yeah. is is uh is a really good book and he's right that nobody really cares it's, it's yep. his line in there over and over again nobody really cares and mm-hmm. I I disagree for part of that but I but I think he would too in sense of talking about family relationships people do care um, mm-hmm. you, you have to be careful of how you take that, what contents, context you take that people don't care, um, because people do care, uh, but people don't care about the, uh, what accomplishments you had, um, when you sit down and have a drink and talk about your old wrestling football days of you were so close to state and, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got some sob stories. You want to hear them? They're sob stories, but nobody wants yeah. to hear that. Uh, Nobody and, does, and and there and some of that comes from that the the motivation from those those individuals that lead a successful life, and uh, are are living a life that that I can uh, look towards, and and uh, some of that that comes down to my faith as well. My faith is uh, important to me, and uh, li- being a godly man and, and being a good dad. Um, so I want to raise now. I guess another piece of that is is. Okay, I got those influences. Now I got these kids that I want them to see me doing what I'm doing. And I want to to everything I do, I think about that of what am I doing? How am I showing uh this kid these kids that uh I'm a good dad or I'm a good guy and they want to be like me or they wanna they wanna do something good with their life. And uh I'm being challenged with uh T ball. Yeah, yeah, I oh, bet. Oh man, T ball <laughs> is is uh is a uh-huh. hard thing to watch. Yeah. Um <laughs> but a fun thing to watch at different times because uh-huh. it's just like those Instagram videos where you see that you say you it says watch a different kid every time because one's playing in the dirt, one's doing this, one's <laughs> playing circles. It's funny. One's so, crying on the sidelines. <laughs> oh, for that's a hundred percent real. Every game is yeah is that there's a kid or two crying there's a kid that gets hit with a ball there's a kid playing in the dirt and yeah. and all i want and i kind of got after ty the other day because he's got a glove full of dirt and then he is like if he gets the ball he grabs the ball and then dumps the dirt on it and then he kind of does this half throw it's like ty put the dirt down put the dirt down <laughs> and i want him to get that just i want him to try all i want him to do and, I, and we had yeah. lots of conversations like, like buddy i don't care if you're good at this i just want you to try i want you to give it your best effort and that's always something i've said about my kids and how i want to raise them i don't care if you're good at it i just want mm-hmm. you to do the best possible job you can do and if you end up being whatever job that is um if he's a teacher like i was then i want you to try and be the best teacher you can so that's where though that internal motivation is of trying to be a better better self than than I currently am. 
I tell you what, it brings me so much happiness when I see those posts of you and the boys out there. And I'm like, yes, he's doing it right. And they're so happy. You can just tell they're, they're so happy and they look up to you so much. And I just feel like that is something as a society that is so disconnected from. And I love seeing it. It, it always, and I'm always commenting, yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah they're uh they're so stinking fun <laughs> mm -hmm. they're yeah fun. you shot you took them both out that one day and didn't you shoot like a couple of does three three yeah, does that was yeah so it was really funny because i had a mentor do taking a participant out um and my the mentors are people that work that are my my volunteer mentors that i that i have put uh participants hunting new hunters uh on deer and do and run them through my program so i was kind of i met up with them and they uh were on their own hunt but i had the boys so i couldn't really be with them so i told them of an area it's like okay uh they they had gotten one deer that we had all had triple tags doe tags and i told them to get in go in this driveway you're gonna park and there's gonna be literally 30 deer come running towards me don't worry about them that you can't do anything about it. They're going to just ditch and that will work out for me. Go in that way to the tree line and these trees or these deer are just going to run in a circle. They're going to keep running back and around and around and around. I, I knew exactly what they've been doing. I, I know I've been in there a dozen times and that's exactly what happened. They went in there. The deer came out towards me and I had Colt on my back and the earmuffs on Thank, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't have a suppressed rifle because there's just it just would have been too loud. Uh, but had him on my back and then tied right next to me. And I hope I'm not desensitizing him to like the wonder, oh my gosh, there's a deer. Uh, because he's seeing it all the time now. But or he's just a little boy and he's just uh. <laughs> what's going on over there probably, yeah, yeah probably what so, it is <laughs> yeah so and i'm pointing him in the direction there look you see the deer coming they're coming over there and they're, they're coming this way and uh so we're talking about just picking out a good one and then uh it's just a bunch of them's like oh, all right we're gonna pick that one and they're not stopping so i just picked yeah. that one it doesn't have antlers so good we dropped that one and then it's like, Ty, put your, cover his ears, cover his ears. Well, that pissed off Colt. He wasn't very happy because he was having his ears kind of crammed. And mm -hmm. then uh, deer went that way, deer went that way, picked off one, picked off another one, and then realized, oh, crap, I have three deer on the ground. I have the boys, both boys, and I'm quarter mile, half, quarter, half mile away from the pickup. And... I'd call the landowner. I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I just drive out here? I got the boys, and <laughs> I had I had diapers and wipes, but I forgot my hunting knife. So I had, thank goodness, a pocket knife that I just is my daily carry. That was not yeah. super sharp because it's use it for everything. And uh, um, pulled the vehicle right up, got got it both deer or all three deer, threw them in the back of the truck. It's like, okay, boys, we did it." <laughs> Met up with it's my... not always this easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then and then met up with uh my mentor and participant and they were just blown away like you just did that with a four-year-old and a six-month-old <laughs> yeah. yeah it was yeah, it's just you figure it out uh and you you make it happen the the hunts are different and there's just a, a it's really not about shooting the deer uh, in those yeah. situations. It's I really just I wanted him to see the deer, and me and my buddy we were having that conversation the other night. We were talking about the first time. That's not the first time I did that with Ty. I did it the year before, and we had shot two deer. And the first time I pulled out a heart out of that deer, you never believe. I I wish I could have captured that, but I would have missed it then. Um, of his like eyes, like that's in that if that's what's in that what's in me and what are we doing with all that because he had already mm -hmm. known buck meat doe meat like that's that's what we eat but then we were leaving all these guts and things that were on the ground and he was just so perplexed as to 
what are we doing with that? And I said, well, the coyotes are going to eat all this. This is not something we don't want to eat any of this. This is pretty gross, but we will take the heart out of here. And so he took that and he was just so enamored with it. And it was one of the, one of the coolest things. And I get to see that with people, participants all the time, new hunters, uh, pulling out a heart and that wonder, but it's totally different. I mean, they Mm -hmm. they took an anatomy class in high school. They know, uh, but that kid has never seen a heart. His perception of a heart is that red thing they draw in preschool. Uh-huh. It is not a pumping not. bleeding heart. So yeah. it was a cool couple of cool, cool experiences. Cool experiences for sure. Absolutely. So in, in my goals, I have I, I put that for this year. I want to take take Ty on some bow hunts. I want to figure out how to um he he's told me he wants to sit in a tree stand. So, <laughs> all right <laughs> that boy is 38 pounds and <laughs> i gotta find like a climbing harness or something to stick them in to yeah so, custom custom made by an or a climbing harness <laughs> we're gonna get some rope and tie fashion one i don't yeah uh, but yeah so some he's of got go- goals too look at you no, Ty's I, got goals that's what he wants yeah he wants to yeah. take that and then and then the other ones I want to I didn't take them both as much as I wanted this year I want to take them both shed hunting um and then uh take Ty on a, a rifle deer hunt within the next year and a, a turkey hunt we always pick up some fall turkey tags and go have a have a turkey shoot there's a, yeah it's kind of a fun deal and I owe him an antelope hunt yet too because those are I gotta draw a tag here but numbers in south dakota still aren't doing great and not really great across the west so yeah yeah montana has a ton of them i've been seeing so many yeah yeah some good bucks a lot of bucks i saw a little baby the other day they were right in our driveway out of our cabin so the the doe she was right at the driveway but her baby was i don't know 200 yards up the drainage and it just ran up the hill and i saw it disappear behind a bush i think it went and laid down in the grass but she stood there for a second and was just like what are y'all doing and she took off those are the cutest baby wildlife of all time yeah is a, is a baby antelope just they are miniature miniature they're everything. so small yeah so yeah. small <laughs> so what's what's next for you uh goal wise what do you have goal wise yeah I want to write another book. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy it I that do. much. Yeah. I want to write a book on uh, strictly hunting stories. Okay. Strictly hunting stories. Um, Cause I feel like there's so much to take away. I really love Remy Warren's podcast because they're pretty much just hunting stories. By yeah. the way, he had, have you seen his new film change? Uh, no, it just came out. I saw, um, yeah. Yeah, it's on my list to, to watch. I think it came sure. out yesterday. Um, but that is a lot about sort of what you were talking about, taking the kids out. And, you know, hunting is still the same thing, but it's just done differently. Yeah. Um, side note. But yeah, I want to write I want to write a kid's book um, for like five to seven year olds. Hmm. Um, a kid's oh, book. On, stories? Yeah, like a storybook. Oh, cool. Um, with probably like wild animals as the characters. And very it will cool. teach them, teach them about just wild animals and wild places and like a very fun children way. And then I also want to write a book on, on hunting stories. So I really enjoy the winter process of like hibernating and writing. I, I, I really enjoy that. So whether or not I do that this next winter or not, that's something I would like to, to sort of just keep going. I think writing is something I will probably do forever now that I've really tapped into it. Yeah. Um, but I have a really busy guide season ahead of me here in Montana. I'm going to be guiding. So the first week of September, we're doing um, a women's, another big game clinic. So I'm doing that with Donna, the owner of Upper Canyon, who was born and raised in this valley and has created a successful uh, outfitting business. So I have a lot to take away from her. So season's just going to be packed full of guiding. I'm not going to have a ton of time to hunt for myself. Um, so I really want to just like dig in as like last year I had nine out of 10. So nine of my clients were successful. Dang. That's I great. Want to, I want to continue that. I want to just keep, 
keep doing that. And I know it's not, you know, I talk about this a lot. It's not just about harvesting those animals but it feels really good sure does and you can go into an area and have that um that knowledge and that skill set to be able especially when you're uh with another human being who's not necessarily around that all the time it's really hard for them to like maintain their composure and um to be able to find a level because I get sometimes so excited when the animals come in I'm like oh there they are right, let's get ready let's get set up and you know so to be able to learn to just sort of like a little bit and be like all right so we're gonna sneak over here and then <laughs> you know but it's so hard <laughs> but I I'm just I want to have another just really good season and um I will regardless of how many tags are punched um, rifle hunters bow hunters what do you got both yep okay, i've got for both. sure for sure three weeks of guiding archery and then i have five weeks of rifle boy but there's yeah. there's a break my dad drew a moose tag in colorado so i'm really hoping to oh, get really? out there for cow that because he'll probably yeah a cow tag Sweet. so he'll probably never draw that again so i'm hoping i can make it out there and it's sort of during that like uh, what is it like two and a half week break between archery season and rifle season here mm -hmm. um and i really want to shoot a bear in the fall uh we tried to go out this spring but it was just i was so busy like i was thinking about that today i was like this is the first spring in so many years that i have barely been able to get out and just scout or hunt luckily i got that turkey i ended up shooting mm -hmm. that with the shotgun because i was like i just want some some meat <laughs> um, the turkey with a bow is stinking hard it's so hard and i've tried for <laughs> seven years and i was finally just like you know what i'm just gonna just gonna pull the plug um no shame and so like yesterday going back to like you were talking about how you love to stay busy and you thrive off that i do too but sometimes i get really caught up in all the things i have going on and like this last week, I just found myself in this slump of just like feeling down and unmotivated. And I was really tired. I was probably drinking too much, just like not taking care of myself because I was working so much with so much, you know, full time job, publishing a book and running a business. And I was like, I finally had a day off. And it's like, I'm going to just go. That's when I texted you. And I was like, I'm about to go into grizzly country and I'm trying to like get the courage to do it because <laughs> there's, there's quite a few grizzlies out here and it's just that it's so new to me and I'm like the chance of me getting attacked by a grizzly versus the chance of getting attacked by a moose probably more likely to get attacked by a moose but I was like all right you just gotta go <laughs> you're gonna be guiding out here anyway like come on buckle up and it was the best thing it just put everything back into perspective and uh, I just like regrounded myself. I like tapped into like what was most important and what I need for myself in this time and, you know, goals and things like that. And that's all I needed was a half of a day on a mountain with my dog running around. We ran into like six piles of bear scat that had just came out of them. And I was like, oh, and Remy was sitting there all puffed up. She could smell them. Uh, there were some moose in the area. But all it took was just an afternoon on the hillside to sort of reground myself, refocus, and uh, be able to just, you know, keep pushing forward towards those goals. I don't blame you. I, as soon as you said working up the courage in your text, was like, I, I'd be right there with you. It's like, <laughs> yeah. if there's anything that freaks me out, it's grizzly. And, you just, oh, yeah. and what's been plastered all over every hunting channel everywhere is that giant grizzly rubbing on that stinking uh -huh. shit. <laughs> that, like, yeah we just yeah. massive thing mm -hmm. they've been Freaks spotted around here they've been spotted around here and you hear all the horror stories of them just like taking a full-size like grown man and just throwing him into a tree with their paw and i'm like what's that gonna do to me that's gonna rip me in half you know <laughs> like, so i there are plenty of nights that i lay awake in bed thinking about archery season walking in at you know, 4.30 a.m. up some drainage in the dark. Yeah. There's... You know, I'm responsible for a client as well, if not two clients. And especially if they are to harvest something, I've 
I've actually never hung meat up in a tree before. I've never had to, but yeah. I anticipate that's probably going to happen this year. Um, you know, that's sort of the protocol around here is you gut them and you, you get that meat up there as fast as you can, if you have to leave it, um, and get it somewhere, obviously on like a ridge line where you can see, but I think about it all the time. <laughs> uh, I, I, so I goals, think... one of my goals, not to get you. <laughs> when I was, when I was working for a school district doing uh, outdoor ed related things and dealing with the insurance company, the conversation was all always around we want to take these kids and have these adventures and all this little outdoor funsy stuff. And they said, no water. You can't do anything around water. Um, water is dangerous. Um, because in the same insurance pool, some kid jumped out of a kayak in Cherry Creek and or Cherry Creek Reservoir. And, and I think it was fatal um, or paralyzed himself. And uh, it's water. Water with kids is scary. Um, there's just something about it. So anytime we did anything, it was we did a third party rafting company if we did some rafting or um, it just completely avoided it unless it was through a third party that could jump into some different insurance pool. But anyway, uh, insurance company conversations I brought up many times that if it is not if there's no risk associated to it, it's not an adventure. I mean, to have right. an adventure, there has to be a level of risk. There has mm -hmm. to be. And I would have that conversation with my superintendent that there's risk and I know you need a risk management plan and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that these kids are safe. But there's a chance that someone's mm -hmm. going to get hurt. And I have that conversation all the time at work. Someone gets shot. Someone could get very mortally wounded or killed and how do we deal with that how do we how do we prevent it but yet how can we still have a realistic adventure and a part of your career is there's a lot of risk i mean that's part of the adventure yeah. going uh -huh. hunting in grizzly country i know a lot of hunters that completely uh -huh. avoid that pocket of montana and, and idaho that uh -huh. they don't want to hunt it because it scares yeah. them to death yeah i saw somebody post the other day uh i can't remember who it was but it was to that to that point of grizzly bears is what keeps or like the fear of predators is what keeps people out from certain areas to hunt when realistically your chance of that happening is pretty low you're more likely to get attacked by a cow moose protecting her young than you are and it's proven there's yeah. more deaths from from cow moose than actual any other predator out there and everyone's like, oh, the moose, they're so cute. Well, I'm not going to be around a cow moose. That's why yesterday I, I turned around because I saw that bear scat and I actually heard the moose out there. They were within a, a couple hundred yards in their tracks and all their scat. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to boogie on out of here. I don't need my dog getting stomped to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. what things are you doing uh, or, or have plans for for? dealing with bears besides of the hanging of the meat in that process but just in general yeah we were, we're pretty yeah so we all carry in reaches and they're on tracking so like whoever we have a safety guy here frank he's our safety guy so when it's hunting season he is in front of the computer all day oh wow and yeah they take it very seriously out here um and so as soon as we leave our vehicle we turn our in reaches on and everyone is on tracking so we can see where everybody's at we all have radios as well and um we obviously carry bear spray most of the guides carry a pistol your client is also having a weapon and so uh, i mean you can only do as much as you can do right if you are in an area where there's you you would think like if there's a lot of like grizzly bear sign we're not going to hunt that area um just because of that the chances are are too high but there are constantly watching the in reaches the tracking making sure everyone's good like i'll message the office for something i can message them and they'll respond right away and so if something does happen we have um, click of the button help wow. is coming out if i if my client harvests an animal 
we have a PAC team, which is awesome. And so the PAC team comes out as soon as they can and they help get that meat out of the woods as fast as possible. Hmm. And so usually by the time you're done, you know, gutting and quartering the animal, they have arrived. And now you have three other bodies to help carry out, out the meat. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and at least That's you great. know, like at least you know that if something does go down, either way, there's people coming out to where you are. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then we sit down with all of our clients and we show them how to use the inreaches. We show them how to use the radios. So if I were to get attacked and something were to happen to me, or if I were to break a leg or get injured somehow, they would know how to contact back. Sounds um, like quite to the an office. operation that well thought out and mm -hmm. structured pretty darn structured. They're the, yeah the real deal the, it's the real deal here here but uh but i still lose sleep at night thinking <laughs> about those grizzlies <laughs> yeah i don't blame you what's your what's your carry gun or spray what do you got i don't have a i don't have a pistol yet i can't afford one but i i, I carry i carry bear spray on my hip <laughs> and actually this spring i um i was like i need to actually try and use this and see what it's like because i always have carried it around but i've never practiced like pulling it out real fast and mm -hmm. having to release the safety on it and pull the trigger i was like i need to at least do this a few times so i have that muscle memory and know how it works yeah. and i did that and i was actually really surprised at the the amount of spray that comes out and the pressure that's behind it like the cloud is pretty massive yeah like if a bear's coming at you and he's close there's no way you're missing him yeah i was quite surprised how well that got the smell got into my house <laughs> Yeah, and it spreads. It spreads. And like I did that in a spot that should have been just fine. The wind was good. And I was like, this is old bear spray. I'm going to play with it just to see. And mm -hmm. it got all the way like in our house and upstairs to our bedroom. And my and we both like not not like towards scratching our eyes and like, oh, this hurts. It was more like a I got this little tickle in my throat. And mm -hmm. it's like I just ate a bunch of pepper. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and I, we both had just that little bit of cough. Like, how in the heck did that get inside the house? Was was that just on me? And I brought it in. Very similar to skunk smell. <laughs> Very mm -hmm. when entrapping mm -hmm. lots of skunks that happens. But my wife is not yeah. pleased with the uh, testing out of the bear spray. Wasn't it? I've accidentally sprayed myself twice. <laughs> it's not been fun. <laughs> And I'm like, wow, okay, that was only like a small dose of it. I can't imagine the entire can being unloaded into your mm -hmm. face. It burnt yeah. like it it burned for so long. We were out in the woods of Colorado. I was I was hunting with my friend. We sat down on this wallow for the afternoon. And I went and was leaning against my pack, doing the old lean back, and the bear spray was in the mesh pocket on the left, and my camera was on the ground to the left of that. So I reached over, I was like, oh, I'm going to take some pictures of this wallow. It's just beautiful in here. And as I reached over to grab the camera, somehow the safety came off, and that bear spray sprayed the left side of my body, the left side of my face, and right up on my arm. And there was, all of a sudden, I was just like, <laughs> trying not to like I didn't scream but I was like this burns and there was a small little stream that was going into this wallow and I sat there with my hand pump and I had the little like uh you know little straw of the hand pump and I was pumped trying to pump off the bear spray because it was just so bad and I went back probably three or four times to try and rinse it off and it was just, I started getting the hot flashes. So like my body would get really hot and then it would get really cold. My body would get real hot and we get really cold. Cause it was like my, I was trying to, I think, uh, like remove the bear spray from it. And it was oh, super uncomfortable. Yeah. Super uncomfortable. It's just like, it's crazy hot. I'm like, is this what it feels like to go through menopause? <laughs> 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 it's like, we got to get, we got to get out of here. Um, but dish soap worked really well for that. Um, uh, but yeah, oh my God. I, I anticipate that would do the damage to a, a grizz yeah. coming at you. Not, oh not pleasant. 
<laughs> well, apparently I ha- I do have a limit on my Zoom account. It says I have six oh. minutes left. Um, oh. So it's probably a good point to wrap it up um, okay. and, and chat about goals, talk chat about bears um, and your book. Uh, and so remind people yeah. again to go check out uh, What's Her Wild on uh, your website there to get your, your pre-order and, and uh, it'll be enhanced here pretty quick as well as Super excited in our ears soon mm-hmm. yeah yeah okay. i'm gonna record an audio version of it gonna and need then... that as soon as possible <laughs> <laughs> i have to wait for the final product yeah. and then i'll record it so i have all the gear to record it so once that's done record that and then there will also be an ebook available yeah yeah i i, I envy those people that uh, can sit down and read books but man i'm not a reader and i got you yeah i i need I, I got my my book coming but uh I, I need an audio version you know it might make a great gift you can just gift it to someone you know, and well i'm gonna i'm gonna get it though and i'm gonna wanna wanna give it some give it some pages and we'll see how far i get because i i've just never never ever no matter how good the book is to be able to just sit down and read one all the way through i just told you i can't sit down uh yeah. even to watch like their favorite show i do that for a little bit of good uh mm-hmm. but it's it's hard for me as my wife and i also were driving past uh like barnes and noble the bookstore and we're talking about you know retail stores they all just started going downhill they're like shopco kmart all these stores are just tanking mm-hmm. and drove by barnes and noble's like how are they are they still doing good uh you know like bookstores but it's like no people still people love to read love to read Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of electronic version you can get to it it's still a very huge portion of people's lives to to be able to read i just don't i just it's just not my thing (laughs) you just don't have the time for it just don't have the time well we'll get you an audio version over to you and to everyone else who's looking for an audio book i'll be recording and also, my vocabulary isn't where it needs to be because I don't read books. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, my, I didn't go to school for any of this, so it's pretty easy read. It's a life story, so it's just like one big story. I feel like, like it should it. be pretty pretty smooth, yeah. pretty easy for people to read. So, so excited to get it in everyone's hands. Can't wait. Good. And just yeah. for you, I'm probably going to do a bunch of reading. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate I'm prob- it. <laughs> I'm probably going to dive into that thing. So. Yeah, yeah. But, goes back well, to your goals surround yourself with people who lift you up right absolutely absolutely I, i'm not gonna yeah. want to wait so yeah but thanks again drea for coming on and uh, uh check out uh I, i've been pushing ridge patrol um on a, on a few of the i've been on the outdoor call radio show app that's been i've been putting episodes out there on on their um outdoor call radio I'm, I'm on thursdays it's a bunch of old episodes nice. so nice. on thursdays you can listen to old old episodes that are pretty pathetic but <laughs> it's fine <laughs> um so yours is going to be on there pretty soon too uh, oh yeah from when i was hosting huh mm-hmm. yeah yeah we'll have some we'll get in there i'm on episode like 12 now uh and okay. we're at uh this episode is probably 168 169 somewhere in there that's but, amazing yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, appreciate you coming on again, and uh, we'll uh, keep everybody in loop on what's going on with that book. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Clint. Always great. All right, you bet.